Let's jump into seed six, one of the most important choices that you will be making as a couple, choosing vendors. Vendors are super, super important that you do your homework, making sure that you are hiring people that you can trust. There is a lot that goes into choosing the right vendors. Now, I have been doing weddings for a very, very, very long time and have been part of a lot of weddings where they say they're family members or friends or wedding party. They're going to do these set up and break down and clean up. But let me just tell you from experience, it doesn't quite work that way. It's funny how people want to be so helpful, but then when it actually comes time to doing it, hmm, they all just suddenly disappear. So be sure that you are hiring the right people to do the right job. Now, there is a pin <laughs> that I love because we actually have people that truly think this. And this is a little picture that is often used a lot at wedding planning conferences because people don't educate their clients. It says, I don't need a wedding planner. All my pins, crafts, and fantasies will just magically fall into place while I get my makeup done. Now, we know that planning weddings and actually executing them, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time and a lot of organization. So don't be that person that thinks it's just going to all fall into place. You've got to have people that are accountable in place. So oftentimes people want to do it themselves, which is totally fine, or they think they can't afford a planner. But this day and time, depending on what your expectations are, for a lot of people as they're building their life together and their career, time is money. And so you really have to consider how much time do you want to spend as an individual, as a couple, as a family, planning these types of things, and how much is your time worth? Are you willing to outsource it or are you really wanting to take on this role yourself so the next thing you're going to see is called a time lapse which we started doing this many years ago when people did not understand labor so I'll give you an example I had a couple that they wanted to get married at a public museum it was open to the public until five o'clock we could not get in to set up until 2 p.m. That means that we had three hours to turn a public museum into a forest. And we had to build a lot of the decor items off site. We worked the entire week and then brought large trucks to bring everything in. There were more people setting up the event than there were guests. And so when the parents got the labor bill, the dad <laughs> yelled and said, I just don't understand. My other daughter got married last year at a country club. And, you know, it's a completely different experience. A setup from a country club where you can get in the day before and you have r roughly 15, 20 hours to set up is totally different than transforming a space in two to three hours. So you really have to understand what you're asking for. And the time lapse that I'm going to show you in a moment was a private home wedding where we had to do certain things to make sure that the property was not going to get destroyed. As you can see, there's a lot of people setting up these things. takes a lot of people behind the scenes to pull these things off and we don't expect clients to understand it especially when you're hiring professionals to do it but you want to make sure you hire the right people so when you're doing vendor meetings you want to consider several things I've broken this out based on several different things that you're going to want to prepare for your wedding want more well you got to visit the link and it's case sensitive. So type the link exactly the way you see it below. It's bit.ly slash capital D-I-Y, lowercase wedding planning. So bit.ly slash D-I-Y wedding planning. And I'll see you on the other side. Have a great day.